Hello, everyone. This is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. Now, this topic tonight is really close to our hearts in this community. And this is the topic of relationships. Um, you know, the need to be uh, cared for and loved and, um, and respected. And by most of us, um, admired and uh, desired by men. And my guest tonight is David Wigand. David is an online coach. He lives in California and has a very successful blog, dating blog, and works with clients, men and women, to help them to understand um, how to overcome their fears and build confidence uh, to have a happy and um, successful dating life. So welcome, David. Well, thank you, Margaret. So let's get the age thing out of the way here. Um, 60 and Me is a community of women, about 32,000 of us now, and we're all on over the age of 60. So 60 years old, we're still alive and vibrant and, uh, you know, wanting things from life. But, you know, we've had experiences. We've been married, divorced, um, uh, maybe raising grown children, uh, elderly par parents. And you know, so we've, we've, you know, we're not your typical client. Um, we are, are maybe a bit more apprehensive about dating than the average, um, uh, you know, younger woman. So my first question to you. Um, what, if anything, do you think changes um, after the age of 60 from a man's perspective in terms of dating? We become smart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, I mean, I'm 51 right now. And, and okay. it's funny, the way that I've changed as a man is that I don't have patience. And I'll share a personal story. Like I was recently dating somebody and I just felt like she was emotionally challenged. Mm -hmm. You know, she was sweet and loving and great. And she satisfied like my love languages, which I think everybody needs to know and how they want to be loved and how they want to be cared for and everything else. But I just felt like she just, I felt like I had to teach her things that I, I learned 10 years ago, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think when we get a little older, we realize that our time left on this earth is very limited. So I think we start to get a, and, and for those of us that don't have a healthy attitude, we start to gain a healthier attitude and realizing I don't have time to waste. I don't have time to, I don't have time to date somebody who's not going to satisfy me. We're very clear about our needs, wants, and desires. That's what I tell women all the time. It's like state your needs, wants, and desires when you meet a man. It's like ask a man, how do you want to be loved? The man looks at you and goes, I don't know. You look at him and go, you're 65 years old. How do you not know in 65 years how you want to be loved? I think I know that I live my life more present in the moment. You know, I live my life more loving. I live my life with a more open heart. You know, I have no patience for games. Um, I'm clearly defined who I am. I clearly define what I want. I think it just opens up the honesty, part, honest part of our lives. It's like the youth really is wasted on the youth. You know, you t I know you talk about this whole concept of having the right mindset, you know, when you're going into, and obviously you've just described what happens to the mindset of a man and woman as they get older. But in a way that can make um, that transition between a conversation and a dating um, experience. Like, for example, you meet someone in a, on a train or you meet someone in a, in a situation which, which is passing because so much today is passing. You know, we're moving fast. How do you, you know, you have a conversation and you think that they're nice, you smile, you do those positive things. But then how do you make that transition from a conversation to, you know, something more than that? You got to put it out there. This is the way I, I think of life is that every single day we're just going to get older. You know, every day we're going to feel worse than we did the day before. It's very subtle, but it's the truth. If you think about the way you feel, that, you know, our brains may feel great, but our bodies don't feel as great. Mm -hmm. You know, things start breaking down. So I really, I look at it as wisdom and beauty and age comes a sense of urgency. So I literally look at it. If I'm a woman on a train and a handsome guy is passing me by, I look at the woman and go, you know, I've enjoyed, I, I tell women all the time, tell the guy, I've had a great conversation. Call me. Put it out there. Don't wait for this guy to do it because this guy might be socially challenged his entire adult life. He might be shy. It's like he may not think you like him. He may have a lot of fears and insecurities and everything else. So put your dating life in fast control, fast, you know, in the fast lane and just look at a guy and say, hey, let's exchange numbers. Call me. I'd love to talk more about, you know, about Lake Cuomo. You know, I'd love to talk more about you know, your trip to, you know, New York City last summer. I'd love to talk to you more. Put it out there. Stop waiting. Too many women sit back and wait and wait and wait. There's no reason to wait anymore. Life is too short. 
No, I think you've raised a really good point. And I think that uh, that's true. A lot of women have maybe been uh, hurt in the past or rejected in the past. And the thought of you know having to go through that again holds them back. And I know there's all those excuses that, you know, that we can make, but I think that's a really good piece of advice. But, you know, a lot of women in the community say things like, you know, I, I look good. I dress nicely. I, I'm, I'm a well-presented person. I'm smart. But no one ever, you know, takes any interest. And they, and they add that last sentence, what am I doing wrong? So what is a woman doing wrong? How would you respond to that comment? It's not wrong. What you're doing wrong is you're not living. You know, it's like, let's go back to the rejection of the past. Who cares? You know, I learned the greatest lesson, Margaret, when I was 17 years old. I was 17. I was in love with Chris Mueller. She was my high school girlfriend. It was just beautiful. I told her I loved her after two weeks. We spent nine months together waiting by the locker, holding hands, (laughs) kissing, having innocent foreplay every single day. I was a virgin at 17. I mean, it was just, it was a beautiful time, you know? And three weeks before the prom, you know, it was a Sunday. We're having a great day. And Monday I go to school and she looks at me. She goes, I want to break up. Break up? What are you kidding? I cried and cried and cried and cried and couldn't eat. And my mother gave me the greatest lesson in the world. And it's a lesson that I've been able to stay with my entire life. She gave me the abundant mindset that I've had my entire life. She looked at me and said, as much as you love her, as much as she, as much as you feel rejected and hurt right now, you're still an amazing, beautiful person. And you're going to find someone who's going to love you so much more from what you learned from this relationship. And I have never had issues with breaking up. I have never had problems. If I have a crush on somebody, and you know, they don't call me back. And I think I had a great date and I sent them a text or, you know, email them or whatever. And, they don't call me back. I look at that and go, they made a choice. They made a choice not to be with me. Chemistry wasn't right. The energy between us wasn't right. I live in abundant mindset. I don't believe in rejection. I don't take anything personally. When you take dating personally, then you're never going to have an opportunity to really go and enjoy love. And I have loved hard. I've been married. I'm not with my daughter's mom. I love my daughter's mom. We're not good as a couple. We're great as friends. I have such an open heart to things. I don't believe in rejection. It's not in my mindset. It's not in the framework of my brain. It's not in the framework of my heart. My heart is wide open every single day. And if you don't live your life like that, you know, you're going to find yourself in the ICU at 80, okay, you know, thinking to yourself as your life flashes above, you know, when my life flashes before me before I die, I want a Disney picture, you know. I want a romantic comedy. I don't want a tragedy. I don't want like, oh, no, why didn't I do this? And why didn't I do that? And how come I didn't open up my heart this way? So life's so beautiful. Live it. Don't think about rejection. So why is it then that men find it so hard to make that first step? I mean, you walk past men every day and they and, you know, they just don't pay attention to the world maybe as much as women do. But why is it that men don't reach out? Because they're wimps, you know, men are just wimps. They, they just, they've had a lifetime of rejection and women don't make it easy for men to approach at all. Women don't smile at men. They don't give eye contact. They sit with their arms folded like this and they've got their own little scowl on their face <laughs> and or they bury themselves in their idiot phone. That's what the, that's why I phone is called an idiot phone. <laughs> ooh, let me go. Ooh, look. I, Oh my God, a website. I mean, it's like, it's ridiculous. It's like women, when you're out and about, hug the world. Like the way my arms are right now, (laughs) embrace it. It's like, here, men, come and get me. It's like, you know, it's like your sexuality is still there. You're still so beautiful. It's like, it's like turn yourself on when you walk out and just say, welcome world, I'm alive and smile at these guys because You've waited all this time. You're 60 years old plus. It's not going to change. Men are not going to change. They're not going to approach. I will approach any woman and talk to anybody because that's who I am. But I am in, a, I am in the little minority of the world. I'm in the 5 to 10% that will socially talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. The rest of the guys suffer from a made-up disease called approach anxiety. So women are just waiting for these guys to approach, waiting for them to approach, waiting for them to approach. And it just doesn't work. 
You know, as you're talking, I can hear the, the responses of the women in our community. So I keep sort of bouncing things back like, you know, but, but this guy is really different. Well, he's American for a start or something. And it's like he's got more of an outgoing personality. But I live in X country. And in that place, you know, men just don't reach out. And if they, and if they do, this is a common comment, you know, they want younger women. You know, if you get a guy in his 60s, 65, if he's got any um, money or any kind of sense of power, you know, he doesn't have to worry about a 60-year-old woman. He can look for someone younger. So this is quite a phenomenon that a lot of women talk about. So how, I'd like your thoughts on, on that. Do men see women differently when they get older? Do they want young? Of course they do. Men, 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 you know, men go to a car dealership and they, you know, their car is three years old and they want the new car already. Men are, men are like, you know, the glistening candy syndrome. Ooh, look at that. It's like, ooh, shiny. Ooh, shiny new phone. Shiny glasses. Ooh, shiny <laughs> cup. That's what men are. So... But that's, you know, you got a small percentage of men that are like that. Here's the deal. Most men don't have the money that they think that they have, right? So the fact of the matter is most men don't have the game that they think they have. So a man that is going out has money and he's debonair and everything else and younger women throw themselves at him. Of course he's going to go take the younger woman because he's going to take the fresh new one, okay? That's just the way it's wired. But that's a small percentage. There's still 95% of the guys out there that don't have the money that aren't debonair. Look. Stop looking for James Bond, you know, stop looking for Sir Anthony Hopkins, you know, stop looking for these guys and start looking for the average guy. And the average guy is 95% of the guys. Those men, they just want to feel sexy. They love it. Like I know a client of mine, he's 65 years old. He says, I love younger women. I love younger women. I love younger women. I love younger women. I go, so that's just wonderful. Great. You know, and, and I want a girl, I want a woman like 45 years old. I said, oh, good. You know, I'm listening to him, right? Meanwhile, okay, we went out one night. There was this beautiful woman. She was 60, 61, gorgeous. I mean, just so well put together, just so, just, she had such great energy, great confidence, just great beauty about her. I walked over, I whispered, I said, do you want to meet a great guy? She goes, absolutely. I said, make this guy feel sexy. She goes, what do you mean? I said, come on to him flirt with him like you were when you were 14 years old. Bring out that beautiful 14-year-old flirtatious little girl that you still see in the mirror every single day. Bump into him and go, oops, sorry. You know, do something cute and clever, right? I said, this guy's going to be putty in your hands. She goes, how do you know? I said, trust me. So she does it, right? He starts talking. She's flirting. She's moving her hair back. You know, she's doing all the things that we always forgot about because, you know, we forget to be that beautiful little girl all over again. And she's flirting with him, and all of a sudden at the end, you know, he's talking to her for an hour. They exchange phone numbers. He calls me a week later. He goes, she's the most amazing woman I've ever met. I said, tell me why. He goes, she makes me feel like the sexiest man in the world. She makes me feel like a king. I've never felt better. I said, did you have sex? He goes, yeah, we did the other night. He says, it's the best sex I've ever had in my life. I said, tell me why. He said, because she makes me feel desired. She makes me feel honored. And that's what you need to do. Just because a guy wants shiny new candy syndrome, what he really wants to do is he wants to feel like the king. He wants to feel honored. He doesn't want to be, you know, not to feel like the masculine man. You give, you give any man a woman that is going to make him feel like a man, and he will jump left and right. My friend Barry, 61 years old, tattoos all up and down each arm. I mean, three earrings in each ear. He's like a... He's like a He's a Jewish clothes salesman that became a rocker in his 50s, right? Dating 25-year-old women nonstop all the time on Match.com, saving them, trying to fix them, right? He's moving down to Cabo with his girlfriend who's 52 years old. I mean, it's like, and I, said, I looked at him, I said, you grew up finally. He goes, yeah, I finally did. He goes, I realized what a real woman was. I said, well, how did she close you? He said, she did not give me any aggravation. She made me feel sexy, honored. She didn't bust my chops in any way, shape, and form. And she flirts with me all the time. Makes me feel like a little boy. You know, and the thing is, um, David, you know, women my age can do this. I mean, we know how to do this. We've had 60, well, you know, 40 years of experience. And, and so I don't know why we don't, you know, remember that and why we only dwell on the, on the things that are maybe going to hold us back. So, David, I wanted to ask you this question about how a woman should look, you know, to feel seductive and to be attractive to a man. And you said earlier that your friend was really drawn to this woman, partly because she was very, I think you said, very put together. So how much does a woman, um, over 60 particularly, have to make an effort, change the clothes, do the makeover and, um, you know, really try to look beautiful? What was your opinion on that? It's just 
just be as sexy as you always did. Dress age appropriately, but don't dress like your grandma did. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, you know, still wear like the necklace you're wearing right now with the beautiful pendant. You know, it's like, I love that. You know, it's like, it's beautiful. It's like, still get your hair done, you know, still wear makeup, but don't wear so much makeup. Cause a lot of women over the age 60 will wear too much makeup. You know, it's like all of a sudden one day we wake up and we become our grandparents mm-hmm. or a mother, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, don't, you know, it's like still, you know, wear like still smell good. Still men are, men are very primal. I don't care if a man a man is still a boy no matter what age he's at. Mm-hmm. That's sorry. At, like in a ponytail, it's still cute, you know? Wear a pair of jeans still, you know? I mean, just still dress like a young girl, but make it so you're sof- sexy and sophisticated. Don't always, you know, wear shoes. You can still wear, put a pair of sneakers on, you know? It's like, it's like you don't have to all of a sudden go to Jill Stewart and dress in those clothes, you know? It's like... You can wear things that feel good. And this is what this woman did because this guy was in the clothing business. She dressed sexy. She still had on a pair of seven jeans. You know, mm-hmm. she had, she was wearing a tank top. You know, she pulled her hair back. You know, it's like embrace it. Embrace your age. Embrace where you're at. Still have sexy lingerie, you know. Still like, you know, perfume and and and, mm-hmm. and just, you know, lipstick. And just, just look, you know, you're just... Be like you were when you were 40 or 30 or 20. It's like it's the energy that you have, you know. It, it's the enthusiasm. Yeah, I think – I mean I was just going to say that's exactly the word I was just going to use. It was like enthusiasm. I think if you've got yeah. that enthusiasm, it's that it's the way that you feel. And so when, pe- when women say – and this happens a lot in the community. I get this comment a lot. I feel invisible. Well, you're, I think what you're saying is that you're only invisible because you're making yourself invisible because you feel invisible, not because you aren't having an impact on the world or that you couldn't, you know, change the way that people interact with you. It's a mindset. It's back to that mindset again. It's all a mindset. Don't be invisible. It's like you've chosen invisibility. You know, you really have. You've chosen to be invisible. And that's what a lot of women do. It's like life starts. It's like, and also here's another thing that's not sexy, okay? If you put yourself online, don't put yourself and say, I'm 60, but everybody says I look younger. Nobody ever wants to think they look their age. How about this? I'm 61 and I look damn good for my age. I'm the hottest 61-year-old in the entire world. It's like we seem to always want to reverse the age. I mean, I'm 51. I don't look 51, but I, you know, but I always tell people, you know, when they tell, when they look at me, how old are you? Forty? No, I'm fifty-one. Oh my god! I said, yeah, and I'm proud of being fifty-one. I look great for fifty-one. It's great. Just look great for your age, whatever it is. Work out still, exercise still. You know, take care of yourself still. Health is so important. Read. You know, become interesting. Go take classes. I mean, there's so many things to do. Whenever you see a man smile and just be happy and look at him like he's mm-hmm. yummy. You know, mm, look at you, you delicious man. I just want to eat you from head to toe. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like embrace the sexuality because let's face it. Okay. We hit 80, our hips aren't going to move the way we want them to move anymore. You know, it's, it's like, it's like really like look at life as the gift that it is every day. And don't ever think about that. You've wasted time. You know, it's like, sure. The shoulda, woulda, coulda game is great. You know, shoulda, shoulda married this guy. You should have been in this direction. Should have been here, you know? But it's like, hey, we are where we're at. Nothing we can do about it. You know, it's really funny. Uh, there's, a, I, I, there's a couple of comments that people made that I wanted to raise with you. One was really funny. This woman said, and it, so it just goes to show that you can have an attitude half full and half empty, right? So this person was saying, you know, I know that if I get involved with a man again, it's, it's either going to be I'm going to be his nurse or his purse. <laughs> And I, you know, and I don't want that to happen. And I really understand what she's saying, because I mean, there's probably many stories that we, you know, people could tell that, that where they were taken advantage of. But, you know, I guess what you're saying is if you want it, you just have to do it. You have to forget all that in the past, all those ways you might be manipulated and hurt and just go, get on with it. Just got to get on with your life. Yeah. You know, you got to stop the madness and get on with your life. It's like, You've got to make, take inventory. You've got to also know yourself. It's about loving yourself. It goes back mm-hmm. to the whole thing. Love yourself like you have no tomorrow. You know, every day, write down how you want to be loved. Write down how you're willing to be loved. Write down what you learned from relationships. If you have anger towards anybody in the past, any man that's ever wronged you, write them an email. Type it up. Literally, dot, 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 go on the email and don't hit send. Just write mm-hmm. it. Clear your space. Clear your heart for love. Open your life for love. And I talk about this 
in all my in all my products for women, I always talk about this because I always find it so important. Self love means being able to really love. Going out and being proactive means you're no longer reactive. Forgetting the past and embracing the present creates a whole new future. It's so important. It's a mindset, and we went, but we started this conversation with mindset. It just doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, I want to talk about the, the things that you do offer online because I know you've got some really great, um, uh, that you've got the blog, of course, which I know is a place where people can talk. And you've also got some products that, that women can, women and men can, can, you know, use and, and, uh, hopefully, you know, in, sort of, um, internalize some of what you've been describing. But just, just wanted to ask you on a practical level, a couple of things. I've decided, or we've decided that we're going to, you know, do what you've said and, and go for it. Um, and so it gets down to the, you know, the where, what, when, and how, right? So right. first of all, you've got to figure out who it is that you really want. And then once you've decided that, where do you go? And where do you go <laughs> to meet good, great men? You don't have to go anywhere in particular. It's like, this is what we do. We live in neighborhoods for pe- because people are just like us living in the neighborhood. I don't go anywhere. I mean, I don't. I go to the market. I go to the farmer's market. I go to the grocery store. I go to the coffee shop. You know, I, I go to the bank, you know, I go to my, I do my daily errands because people like me are doing daily errands. So I believe in serendipity, serendipitous moment. You know, mm-hmm. it's like if I go out there and talk to people wherever I go all the time, I'm going to run into somebody that I'm going to be attracted to. When I find someone attracted to and I connect to them, I'm going to look at them, give me your number. I'd like to get together. I'd like to hang out with you. It's, we don't need to go to the bars. I go to a restaurant. There's a, um, a little cafe here that has vegetarian food. I go there by myself one night a week, two nights a week. I sit there at the counter. I know people. I know the waiters there. I know the waitresses there. I go with my daughter there. I meet people there. It's like I don't do anything. I don't have men or, you know, like men and women go on expeditions. Let's go on a man hunt right now and a woman, you know, women and men go on a women hunt. Let's go hunt down some women. And it's just so crazy. It's just be so wide open. It's like they're all over the place. You don't have to change your daily routine. Mm-hmm. All you need to do is wake up and participate in your life. Instead of just running into the supermarket and going to grab a quart of milk, walk in there, smile at people, engage conversations, and make buying a milk an experience. Make everything an experience. Okay, so we've got the where, the where you're going to meet somebody, and that's what you've just said, It just where you go, where you love to go, do things that you love to do. And then, so, what, so what's the how? Give me an, an approach scenario. Oh, how is so simple. <laughs> Open your eyes and smile. Remember that this man, remember, okay, that you've been waiting for Prince Charming to come and approach. He doesn't know his GPS is broken. It's never going to work, okay? <laughs> so, so how is very simple. See this phone? Put it down. Don't put the phone in, 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 in public. Don't ever put your headphones on and listen to me music at the gym or anything else. When you see a guy you're attracted to, do the five-second flirt. Look at him, smile, and realize you're just a dumb man. You're never going to come and approach me unless I make myself available. Are you idiot? Are you going to come over here because I'm smiling right now even though I'm so nervous? Will you come here, please? You know, yeah, okay. Smile. Say hello. Ask a stupid question. Men love to fix things. Maybe you've eaten... You go to a sandwich shop or a tea store and there's a guy there. You know, look at him and go, I don't know what to get today. Play the damsel in distress. How's, I have no how's idea this chocolate to muffin? Today. Is it good? <laughs> exactly. How's this chocolate muffin? Is it good? I'm gluten free. You know, is it you know if it's gluten free or not? You know, and it's like, oh my God, this line is so slow today at the bank. What's up with postage workers? Why are they always so slow? I don't understand. Just talk about things. And by That's the way. It. And by the way, I've got to say this, David, because this is going to be recorded, of course, and, and we're going to be playing this back to the community. And I just want to explain to the ladies in the community and men, if you're watching, <laughs> is that the people walking behind David are his cleaners and his housekeeper. And that's Olga. And uh, just in case you wonder who these people are that are walking past. But thank you so much, David, for being here and, and letting us come into your home. It's wonderful. <laughs> no, you're welcome. We were outside, but we weren't getting clear enough, uh, clear enough reception. No, this there. is totally deck, fine. It's totally fine. Gone my deck to my living room to, I mean, we might as well just go, we might as well just talk about sex. We'll go to the bedroom <laughs> now and then we'll talk about, just we'll talk about bathroom. grooming and we'll go to the bathroom, you know, you can watch me do my hair today, whatever it is. You go in my closet. We can pick out some clothes I got to wear today. So no, it's it's that's what I mean. It's also about opening up your life. You should be so wide. You should be so yeah. wide open to life, not be yeah, afraid of. No, I think that you've really given some great advice and some really practical ways to approach this. I could go on talking with you forever because it's so interesting and it's actually opened my eyes to a lot of things. I really appreciate it. But I have two more questions for you. One one is. 
Tell me about the 60-year-old David. What's, what's I, happening in I your life when you're 60? I don't know. I live day to day now, you know, it's like I'm very present. What's happening is my life is still going to be fantastic and great and I'm going to keep accomplishing everything I want to accomplish. I'm going to be very present and I'm going to have wonderful relationships and my daughter will be a little older, you know, so. Doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. So doesn't tell us about, me. okay, so tell us about what you do to help other men and women with your products because I know you've got a great website and, um, uh, and just tell us a bit about what, what we could uh, do to get some, some guidance. I mean, my products are everything from zero to, you know, from zero to 60. I mean, it, it's, it's about falling in love with yourself. Every product has an audio on self-love because I believe in that. It's mm -hmm. about how to go and learn how to attract men, what men really want, what they think, how you can understand them better, how you can date better, how you can let go of bad dates instead of being so obsessed with somebody how you can meet people in certain situations, how you can feel the best about yourself. It's all just, it's really what I call a dating tune-up. It gives you the opportunity to really embrace who you are and see the beauty of who you are and really work on your strengths and develop those strengths even further. Because when I work with somebody, whether it's men's products or women's products, it's all about teaching them how to be the best version of themselves mm -hmm. and loving the best version of themselves because that's what it's all about. It's not about memorizing a line or I give you examples in a lot of situations but these examples are just there for you to use them and for you to grow in those situations. So it's, they're amazing products. I mean, because I put my heart and soul in them and I believe in them 190%. And I use them too for my dating life. Is there any last message you'd like to give to the women? You've already given us so much, but any, any last parting words of wisdom, how, how men think? Yeah, you're beautiful. All of you are absolutely beautiful, whether you're tall, skinny, fat, purple, red, blue, orange, yellow doesn't matter whether your breasts are no longer as firm as they used to be, your butt isn't as firm as it used to be, you're still absolutely beautiful. Embrace who you are, embrace the beauty of who you are, embrace where you're at in your life because if you, feel, if you do that and feel sexy, a man is going to look at you and absolutely adore you and make you that princess or goddess that you always wanted to be and that you deserve because I love women mm -hmm. so find men that love you back. Thank you. Well, you've inspired us. Thank you so much for your time. And we'll have you on again to give you an update on how everyone's doing. Yeah, please. Anytime. I appreciate it, Margaret. It was really great talking to you, David. Thank you. Bye. My pleasure.